Wonderful. So let me go back. Uh, wonderful. All right. So tonight, this is called How to Launch a Successful Real Estate Career. Also, it's about how to become a real estate agent. My name is Michael Devlin. I'm the Vice President of Career Development for Century 21 Real Estate Alliance, a large Century 21 group in the Bay Area. And we're going to talk a little bit about why real estate, if you're looking to do something different, uh, which I assume you are because you're participating in this, why would you be interested in getting into real estate? We're going to talk about what you might look for when you're choosing an office to affiliate with. And finally, how to get started is what do you need to do to get a license and how long does that take and how much does all this cost? How about that? So we're going to start with the discussion of why you might be interested in a real estate career. And I'd like to begin by just some terms. The words a broker and salesperson refer to different kinds of real estate licenses. You can have a broker's license or a salesperson's license. Now, you can do as a salesperson pretty much everything you can do as a broker except be independent and well brag about it right those are the only things you can do with a broker's license that you can't do with the salesperson's license you can salespeople have to work for brokers brokers don't have to work for brokers and they can say hey i got a, a better license most people don't care about that in order to become a broker you need two years full-time experience in real estate in the last five years or four years part-time experience in real estate in the last five years in order to go take that exam we're going to talk about being a salesperson first the word agent is a little bit different. We sometimes refer generically to everybody as an agent, but the agent represents another person who's called the principal in dealings with other people that are called, what are called other people, third parties. So the way this sometimes comes up in my, my world is somebody will ask me, they'll say, look, at if, if I get my real estate license and I join the office, and I'd like to buy a house for myself or my family. Um, can I be my own agent in that transaction? And technically, legally, the answer is no, because you can't be your own agent. You can only be an agent of somebody else. Having said that, that's a technical answer. Um, it's also, I know, not really the question they wanted the answer to. What they were really asking me is, could they save money on the commission if they were a real estate licensee? And the answer is yes. It's not because you're acting as an agent in that transaction, but because of your professional status, you might save money on the commission. So the word licensee refers to brokers and or salespeople. And when they're representing buyers and sellers, they're agents. The word realtor means you've joined essentially the union, which you're probably going to do if you're serious about selling real estate, uh, one to four units, residential property. The, um, the reason that you would join the Association of Realtors is number one, you get the key that unlocks homes when people aren't there. Two, you get access to all the contract forms and software to write offers and that sort of thing. And three, you get access to the multiple listing service pretty much nationwide. Um, we'll talk more about that later. So what can, how can you have a real estate license? Well, you could work for a broker or not work for a broker, but you need to work for a broker. Now, the reason I've, I've got this slide is because sometimes people say to me, I don't know why I'm getting a license. I'm not really too sure what I want to do. Do I have to figure all that out before I go through the process? The answer is no. You can get what's called a non-working license. That means you're, you don't have a sponsoring broker. It's like a non-working car, however. You can show it to people, you can sit in it, but you, you can't really drive it because it's not a working car. You have to be um, sponsored by a broker in order to have a working license, but you could get a license and not have a broker and keep the license alive and renew it every four years. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to. If you have a real estate license, you can do residential real estate, commercial real estate, loans, property management, and business brokerage. Those are the five areas that you're allowed to do. There's no commercial license or property management license. Our company does all of these. So we do residential, we have a commercial division, a loan division, a property management division, and we sell businesses. 
Why are people, uh, you know, attracted to real estate, freedom and independence, being in business, self-employed, having your own, your own enterprise, that sort of thing. Um, that is not only an advantage, but it's also a disadvantage in that you have to be a self-starter. Where I'm going with this is real estate agents don't punch time clocks. In other words, we're not going to call you at 10 in the morning and say, hey, where are you? You know, it's not that kind of a deal. Um, you work somewhat independently. We have training. We have some meetings that you can go to and, and support and coaching and that sort of thing. But you really have freedom and independence because you're an independent contractor in business for yourself. The people most successful in real estate are people that have always wanted to have their own business, maybe already have some business acumen. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Financial rewards, how much money can you make in real estate? Well, we have agents and teams that are making over a million dollars a year in real estate, um, hundreds of thousands. I'm going to go through some examples so you can see what, what might be possible if you were committed to doing this full time. One of the other things that attracts people to real estate is the opportunity to make investments. If you want to be a real estate investor, you know, there's an old line, buy land, they're not making any more of it. If you want to be an investor, being in real estate is a good place to be. You get to find opportunities before other people. You see things before the normal people see them. And um, you know more about financing and what's going up and down and, and that sort of thing. Security. I had a friend who went to San Jose State, studied mechanical engineering, would, excuse me, sorry about that, multitasking, anyhow, he went to San Jose State, um, mechanical engineering, got a job at Hitachi in the hard drive division and was there for 28 and a half years and they let him go, right, and um, they said it wasn't a personal decision because they shut down the department, closed the division, they closed the whole plant. So I'm not saying my friend was necessarily a perfect engineer, but even had he been a perfect engineer, they still would have let him go because they decided they didn't need anybody doing that at that place anymore. So in real estate, you can be bad at it, you can fail at it, but you can't really get fired. Because you're an independent contractor, if you don't like us, you can go down the street and work with somebody else. If you don't like anyone, you just tough it out for two years, get your broker's license, and you can be independent. How are real estate agents pay? Now we're getting to it. I'm using a relatively inexpensive house for Santa Clara County, where I'm located right now, a million dollars. And the amount of commission is not chiseled in stone, not set by law, it can be negotiated. It wouldn't be uncommon for a 6% commission to be paid, which would be $60,000 in total gross commission. Now there's two offices involved typically. There's the office that represents the seller who's called the listing office and the office that represents the buyer who's called the selling office. And it doesn't have to be this way, but the common arrangement would be that it's split at 50-50, each office gets $30,000. If you're a brand new salesperson just getting started in real estate, you might begin with a split as low as $15,000, depending on where you go. Um, we start people at a higher level than that. But um, if that were true, many offices start people on a 50-50 split at the beginning. That means that you would get $15,000. If you found somebody who wanted to buy a million dollar house and they bought it, you'd get 15. If you listed a million dollar house and it sold, you'd get 15. So how much can you make? Well, how often could you do one of those two things? If you every quarter sold one house, you'd make 16,000. If you did one a month, it would be 180,000. Um, you can see the simple math. Now, the reality is this arithmetic is off. It's not accurate. And the reason it's not accurate, because the more you make, well, the more you make. So although you might start at a lower split, and by the way, we typically start new agents at 70-30, and it goes all the way up to 95%, right? And this is a more common example of how the splits might go from 50 to 60 to 70 to 30. So as you do more volume, you get paid more, usually starting at 70, topping out at 95%. 
So if you were to take that same commission at 50%, you only get 15,000, but we'll start you at 70%, which would be $21,000. That's obviously better than 15. And by the time you get to 95%, you're getting, well, obviously most of the commission. Now there is a interrelationship between commissions and services provided. So there are offices that charge um, some fees, but they don't really, they pay high splits and they charge high fees sometimes and they don't do anything to help you. And when you're getting started in the business, there's almost an inverse relationship between the commission split and your likelihood of being successful. At the beginning, you need training, you need mentoring, you need coaching, you need support, you need tools and systems, you need stuff, right? Um, in order to be successful. Um, your options for getting into the business are you could be a referral only agent. That means you're not showing homes or doing open houses, listing homes, but referring people. Um, that isn't very expensive to get into, but you're limited. That would be something if you were just tabling. We ha I have a team and I mentor agents that are on the team, you get to go with me on appointments, You, um, I go with you on appointments, um, I help you with your clients and transactions. I have a dual career division, which is for part-time people. If you have other jobs or other commitments, I actually have a system that will work around that. And of course, we have full-time agents, um, big-time agents, which is a, sort of at the top. So what is going on in our market? Well, let's see. I start, I'm going through the different areas where we have offices. Contra Costa County, notice the median price is under 650, 625. Alameda County, the median price of a home is about 870, let's say almost 900,000. Santa Clara County, 1.2 million is the median price of a home. San Mateo County, well, a little almost 1.3 and uh, a little over 1.3 for San Francisco. Um, that's just sort of an update as to where we are. Prices are topping off, they're dropping a little bit. You'll notice that there's been a change, not only in the one month from um, month to month, but also year over year, as well as in uh, not only just for these counties, but for California and the country as a whole. The prices are going up so much, so fast, that they've sort of topped off and things are stabilizing, which is a good thing. If you're looking for an office to get started with, there's different options. There's national brokerages where you have more trainings and tools and name recognitions. There are boutiques. In our market, there's an office called Serrano, for example, which is a sort of a, a specialty boutique office. Those offices are usually smaller. They have very little or no training at all. They basically assume you already know what you're doing. And there's even now cloud brokerages, which are not really designed for new people, where they don't have any offices at all, and you, you know, work from home or from the coffee shop that sort of thing, I, and, and I have doubts about the viability of that option in the long term. Now, once you've gotten into the business, there's coaching, and what coaching looks like is creating a business plan. I'll give you an example. Let's say you wanted to make $200,000 a year, right? a nice round number. Um, we know what a median price is, let's say a, mean, a million dollar house. And we know what the average commission would like you to be on the sale of that property. Let's say it's not quite 3%, but two and a half for each side of the transaction. So it's about $25,000 gross commission for every transaction, right? That's about an average. So if you did 12 transactions, if you sold one house a month and you gross $25,000 for each sale, your gross income would be $300,000 at the end of the year. So that doesn't sound one a month. I don't know, it doesn't sound that much. So now the question is how many appointments would you need with buyers or sellers in order to reach that level? Let's say four might be needed in order to actually find somebody that wants to buy or sell a house. Now, if you had one appointment a week for 48 weeks, and you converted 25% of those, that would be 12 transactions. In other words, you can take a month off, 
do one appointment a week and you would hit those numbers. If you had an appointment a day, that would be way better. So then we talk about, all right, where are you going to get the appointment a week? You're gonna to talk to people you know, I have a system for doing open houses, I have more open houses than I have agents to do them. We are doing seminars with the credit unions or an affinity program with Key Point Credit Union and Mary West and Providence and Travis Credit Union and Cooperative Credit Union, and the police Credit Union of San Francisco and more are being added so that we're working with businesses that could refer business to us. Training is the obvious of these things. You're, you know, in a room and somebody's talking and, you know, you're learning. Um, mentoring is where I go with you on appointments, you go with me on appointments, I actually help agents write offers, close transactions, all that sort of stuff. Century 21, I hope you've heard of this before, we're um, one of the largest, uh, we've rebranded a little bit, and this is somewhat of our new logo and image and that sort of thing. Um, we are the most well-known name in real estate among brand awareness. So you can see, obviously, we're the biggest in terms of people's recognition. Remax is not as big in our area as it is in other areas, but it's number two. Coldwell Banker, a lot of people still think it's a bank. You know, Keller Williams, I worked there for seven years, and people thought it was a paint store. I don't know. But ERA, Better Homes, you can see sort of the main awareness. So it's nice that Century 21 is the most recognized name in real estate because when you're new no one knows you and if nobody really recognizes the company you work for it's a lot it works better if you have a recognized name when you tell people where you work um, most people when they recognize name we're worldwide we're in 85 countries um, you can get an idea of you know where they are with, with that map we're in 85 countries we are the international brand in real estate um, we're opening up nearly one office a week right now in China. Um, you, can, you can get an idea if you have any visions about doing business internationally, which you can do through our system. We actually have an international system. You can partner with agents in other countries. Um, yeah, anyhow, that's kind of cool. We also have an online university where we have training programs, webinars, how-to videos, live events. Accelerate is our basic and get people going kind of a course. We have marketing where we market the name to a variety of different um, sources. Our website has 4.8 million Vis uh, visits per month, 57 million people in 2017 went to the century21.com website. We have a Hispanic website, a global website, a commercial site, and a luxury site. Um, all are part of the Century 21 system. We advertise so that people know who we are on a variety of different things. Um, a lot of it on different kinds of ESPN sponsorship. 21% um, of home buyers and sellers um, age 25 to 49 watch ESPN in the past week. 17% watch it uh, regularly. So we're hitting the kind of people that we would like to. Uh, HGTV, we run ads, ESPN. Um, we branded ads on, as you can see, on the websites, all that sort of thing. We also syndicate things when we list homes, um, we syndicate them throughout hundreds, 200 plus different websites, so that that ends up, people click on it and they want to see the property and those leads are routed and given to our agents. Um, we actually do lead generation for our agents. Tools and systems, we have a website called Zap. In 2013, the parent company of Century 21 bought Zip Realty uh, for $160 million. They didn't really want the Zip agents or that sort of thing. They wanted the software. And so Zip, we call it Zap. We have the software that's an integrated customer relationship management system, websites, mobile apps, all that sort of stuff. And one of the things that Zap does is that people that are in your database, it's watching 
watching them and if they're clicking on stuff and doing searches and that sort of thing then it gives them a score and as the number gets higher it shows that they're doing more and more so you you don't have to wonder who should i be calling or who should i be talking to the system pretty much lets you know that we also when we list properties have a report that we can send to the sellers on an irregular automated basis it shows how many hits they've gotten on Zillow or Realtor.com and all the other different websites, how many people have saved it, um, um, all that sort of stuff so that they know we're in fact marketing the property. We have contact management system, customizable marketing library, targeted drip campaigns, all that sort of stuff is built in. Uh, proposals, uh, presentations for buyers and sellers, all of that is built in. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Social media. So we spend a lot of time on social media marketing with special ads and things like that that you can post on social media, classes on how to do all that. Um, our intranet, that's our, you know, behind the scenes where we share information with each other, is powered by a company that you might, you know, you might recognize. It's called Facebook. And so Facebook has a thing called Workplace, which we use at Century 21 for our intranet for people that are online. As you can see, it looks like Facebook. Um, Preferred Client Club is an automated system for following up with clients. We have national events, retreats. There's a convention going, coming up in March. I'm, uh, I'm going and um, that sort of thing. Now, our group, Century 21 is a franchise, and our group is all called Century 21 Real Estate Alliance. We have nine offices in the Bay Area. We're the biggest Century 21 in the Bay Area, one of the biggest real estate companies in the Bay Area. We have over 500 agents. We're in the top 25 Century 21 offices in the United States. And we were founded in 1997. And in 2011, we started an expansion and a growth period, adding offices in San Carlos. We're now up to nine offices and over 500 agents. We're looking to add offices in Morgan Hill and Gilroy and Hollister. We're talking about locations in Saratoga. We're on a growth move right now. Those are the different managers, uh, vice presidents and the like. A good looking group, if I may say so. Um, and our office locations located at a variety of different kinds of buildings and different towns and things like that. And when you've joined our office, you could use any of our locations. You could meet somebody in our San Francisco branch or the Oakland, or um, we have three offices in San Jose, Millbrae, San Carlos, Fremont, Hercules. You could use any of the different branches. You also get, because Century 21 is big, a bunch of business benefits, which means discounts. Discounts on a whole bunch of different things. Um, this is a really long list. It includes things you probably never heard of um, or didn't even know you might want, but it includes also Verizon and different uh, other kinds of Sprint, uh, AT&T, all that sort of stuff. You get discounts because Century 21 is big and we get discounts. Our awards and accomplishment, we have the number three, number 10, and number 12 agents in the Century 21 system. We have the number two team in the Century 21 system in our offices, uh, San Francisco main offices in the top 25, and our companies in the top 25 offices. So how do you get started in real estate? Well, to begin with, you have to take three college level courses. You don't have to go to college. We provide that as part of our package. You have to take three college courses in real estate. You also have to go take an exam given by the Department of Real Estate and apply to get a license. Right? I'll talk more about that. So before you can take the state exam, you have to have a college level course in real estate principles, a college level course in real estate practice, and one other elective course. And the elective can come from anything that's on this list you'll notice that accounting and economics and business law are on the list. So if you've ever taken accounting, economics, or business law from a junior college or better, and you can get your hands on a copy of the transcript, you have one of the three courses, right? You have, an, you have a course you could use as an elective. 
Now, your options to get the college credit is you could go to college. Very few people go that route anymore because it's expensive and takes a long time. Our system, our college level component in my course is an online course. Now, the way an online college course works is you, well, you log into the course. You, um, every, there's a book you can download, it's a PDF. You also can see everything on the screen. You read a little bit, take a quiz, read, take a quiz, read, take a quiz. You can do the quizzes as often as you like. And after 18 days, you don't have to do it in 18 days, but you can't do it any sooner. After 18 days, you're eligible to take the final exam. The final exam is an online final exam. You can take it at home and it's an open book test. So just to be clear, the final exams for the three college level courses are online, at home, open book, cheat as much as you want to, right? So final exams, you can cheat as much as you want to. Um, it's an open book test. So this is not a difficult part. The, the, the reason they make you wait 18 days to take the final exam is you could pass right now. You get, if we gave you the final exam, left you alone with your computer and your cell phone, and you had three hours, that's how long you have to take one of the final exams, plus a copy of the book, um, you could look up 75 questions and get, you need to get 75 out of 100, right? You could look them up right now from scratch in three hours and pass this test. And so that would make it all look like a silly thing that they're requiring it. So they make you wait 18 days so that you could have studied for 18 days. And therefore, it's, it's considered to be a 45-hour equivalent course. In addition to passing the three college courses, which is relatively easy, you have to take an exam given by the California Department of Real Estate. It is not an online test. You can't take it at home, and it is not open book. It's 150 multiple choice questions. A, B, C, D, pick the best answer, no essay, no fill in the blank, no true false. Um, you need to get 70% of the questions correct in order to pass the exam. Now, if you think about it, that's not really a high score to require. Think if you're laying on the operating table and your brain surgeon came in and he's pulling on his gloves and he says, don't, I may be new, but don't worry. I passed the brain surgeon's exam. I got 70% of the questions right. I nailed that test. Well, that doesn't sound very good, right? Because if you get 70% right, it means you miss more than one out of every four questions they asked you about brain surgery. That doesn't sound very good. So my point is you don't have to be a brain surgeon to get a real estate license. You understand? You don't have to be a brain surgeon. All you have to do is get 70% of the questions right and you're in. Having said that, every time they give the test, the Department of Real Estate fails more than 50% of the people that are in the room. And many of those people, they have failed before. And just to be clear, all of the people the Department of Real Estate fail, all of them have finished those three online open book, cheat as much as you want to college level courses. They all were able to do that. You can't even take the exam without doing the three college courses. My point is just doing the three college courses does not mean you're getting a real estate license. It simply means you've done the minimum that you're required to do in order to go take the exam. I have classes to teach you how to pass the exam. There's 12 of them, they're live. You can start with any one, take them in any order. You can repeat them as often as you can stand it. There's no first class in that it's like a pizza where it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. I broadcast live from our office every Wednesday night in North San Jose. You can come in person or many people are actually online. It's broadcast on the internet using the same software that you're looking through now. Plus it's recorded and you can watch replays whenever you'd like. Um, the cost to go through the program is $498. That includes the college level credit, it includes the live classes, the video replays, it includes a practice testing system, plus a Saturday workshop, all that's included.
Now, the $99 for the workshop only, that's for people that went elsewhere to get their college courses and are struggling to pass the exam. I sell that as a standalone item, but it's included in the live in-person and the, you know, the webinar versions. So the components of the course, the college level co credit comes from an affiliate of ours called Online Ed. Online Ed is approved by the Department of Real Estate to issue the certificates of completion necessary to take the exam. I teach people how to pass the test and our practice testing comes from a friend of ours called Real Estate Trainers. So here's the system. You go through the college courses and attend the live classes at the same time. Then you do the practice testing and the Saturday workshop. Those are the four moving parts of the course. I have a really high pass rate. Virtually everyone who goes to the course passes on the first time. I encourage you to come and sit through a class for free, either in person or online. There's no cost or obligation. We have placement assistance. Just because you've enrolled in our course, you're not obligated to work for Century 21. And I guess we're not obligated to hire you either, but frankly, that's why we're doing it. And so we have a placement program and can help you get placed at offices all around the Bay Area. Tuition is $498. And when you come and work for us, when you close your first transaction, we're going to rebate all of that money back to you on your first transaction. We have a 100% tuition rebate plan. How long does this take? Short answer is uh, the three and a half to six months. Um, three and a half months assumes you're going through it as fast as possible. Six months is a little bit more leisurely, but it's going to take you 18 days or two and a half weeks to go through real estate principles. You can't start practice until the two and a half weeks has moved on. Then another two and a half weeks, you can take the practices final. You have to wait two and a half weeks to take the elective. And so that's seven and a half weeks. Um, only then can you apply to take the state exam. And right now it's taking eight weeks from when people apply until when they get a test date. Three and a half months is as fast as you can pretty much do it. And you can take a little bit longer. So part of this process is you have to have fingerprints taken. They don't care at the Department of Real Estate that this has happened already, that you're in law enforcement, that you're a nurse, that you're a teacher. They don't care. Everybody has to do it again. It's going to cost about $25 to um, have the fingerprints taken and $49 to have them processed. And that takes six weeks, which is why, you know, it takes eight weeks to get a test date. What does it cost? Well, to get in the school is $498. To take the exam is $60. There's a fingerprint processing fee of $49, a rolling fee, which is the fee to take your fingerprints, which is $25. The license fee is 245 the Board of Realtors, the union. Now, we can sort of draw a line here, because let's say you were interested in, in starting off as a referral agent. So if you did that, you would not have to join the Board of Realtors or the multiple listing service, which would save you about $1,000. Um, and then you could wait until you had something going. And then when you get paid on that, you could join the association. Um, however, when you add all this up, we're talking about less than $2,000, not all at once and not all up front, but spread out over time. And our average commission is $25,000. So sell a house and you're way, way ahead. The license is good for four years. Every four years, you have to take 45 hours of continuing education to renew it. Um, that's provided by the Association of Realtors at no charge. This is information on how to contact us. If you would like to get more, that's my website. You should check out my Yelp reviews. The number of the reviews seems to be changing, but the distribution isn't. Um, I've got generally a five-star rating, although you can see there is a blemish on my review. Um, somebody gave me Somebody gave me a four-star review. I know it's 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 shameful. Um, it's shameful. But uh, anyhow, I have pretty good Yelp reviews. If you read them, you'll see some people really got into it. They wrote really long reviews. They took pictures of their license. Eh, it looks pretty good.
So if you would like to attend a free class, um, you go to my website, dreclass.com, um, and you would go, there's a button that says free guest lesson. And if you're interested in signing up, if you're saying, I don't need to see another class, I just want to sign up, you would click on the sign up now button and you have to do two things. You have to click on the green button and that allows you to enroll in the college level course that you need. That's $99. And then 399 is the webinar and the in-person, um, the live classes. That's how it comes up the 498, 99 for the college courses, 399 for the live classes, the practice testing program, the Saturday workshop, all that other stuff. Um, and that's what it looks like when you when you get to the form to fill out to enroll in the course. Um, uh, any questions? I don't know how we're we're doing with everybody online. If do you have any specific questions? At this point, people oftentimes are interested in trying a class. Um, that's usually the next step. The next class is this Wednesday night at our office in North San Jose, which is on Concourse, which is near Lundy, which is off of Hostetter, or you, you can do it by webinar. Lots of people do that because, you know, it's easier than driving around. Any questions? No, I'm not seeing any right now, so I'm assuming we're good for now. If you do have any questions in the handouts, there's our contact information. Give us a call. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Best thing to do, come and sit through a class, either online or in person. That's really the best way to see if, you know, you can stand 11 more of them, right? Because this is going to work for you. Anyhow, that's all I've got for tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in class.